Welcome to the Hoops with Us podcast. And today I'm joined by a very special guest, Coach Serge Clement. He is an assistant coach at Marist. Coach, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Alex. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for asking. So, sure. Coach, the first question that I have for you today is, for, uh, for everyone out there that uh, doesn't know too much about you, just tell us a little bit about your coaching journey. Uh, I started, I had my start at uh, SUNY Cortland, a Division three institution, plays in, uh, in the SUNY at conference. I was fortunate enough to play, no, excuse, I was fortunate enough to play at SUNY Potsdam. And then from there, I transitioned over to Cortland. And I worked for uh, Thomas Spanbauer, who's a legendary coach in the SUNYAC, a Division three level. And he's won many, many games, so he knows what he's doing. Um, I got my start there. And I was fortunate enough to work with him for two years. And I was able to un obtain my master's from there. You know, just getting my feet wet, pretty much green to the business, uh, learning a lot under him. Um, from there, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, the coach, the coach at Adelphi at the time was Dominic Savino, and I was able to uh, be under him for two years and uh, learned a lot. Great deal. Uh, great program on Long Island. Won, won a few games. Um, high level league, Northeast 10. Really good Division II conference. And then uh, from there, after I did my two years there, I took a leap of faith and, uh, you know, coached at AU for a summer. But then I was fortunate enough to get on at St. Peter's University. And from there, I uh, been there for five years. And then from uh, St. Peter's University, I was fortunate enough to go with Coach Dunn to, to Maris. And that's all she wrote right now. So I've been in the game for 12 years now, um, eight years Division One, and the rest uh, Division Two and Division Three. That's my, obviously, that's my journey, but there's a lot of stories within that. But um, I'm fortunate enough to be here in the position that I'm in now and uh, still working my way. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, Coach, the next question that I have for you, uh, in your first season at Marist, the 2018-2019 season, you guys had your highest win total in five years. Uh, from your standpoint, what do you think made that team so special? Uh, the biggest thing that made that team special was they've been together for three years. Um, you know, obviously they had the highest win total with us, but it's a, it's a learning experience for the, for the, those seniors that were there. And uh, we were just able to put the finishing touches, even though it didn't equate to being over well over 500, but the satisfaction of them to see them win a couple games in a row to salvage their senior year, uh, it made us smile. Mm -hmm. Because when you really think about it, uh, basketball is, is, is finite. And once it's over, it's over. Yep. And that's the one thing you can't turn the clock back on. And to this day, I, I think about my last game. And so to being with those seniors and, you know, coaching them up that year and watching them grow and watching them and change their habits of what they were accustomed to, to try to learn what we're preaching. And I, th I believe that was the hardest thing for them, but they all bought in. Um, they all, they all played hard, harder than they've used to been accustomed to. And, um, you know, for them, I, I'm just happy that they uh, finished the way that they would like, even though it didn't equate to uh, over a 500 record, but they played hard for us and they tried and they left with a smile on their face and they all obtained their degrees. And that's what we're in the business for. So yeah, that's a, good, that's a good thing. Absolutely. Like what you just said, uh, from talking to all of the other coaches that I've done this podcast with and just talking to them on the side, outside of the show, I think that's what all coaches just really ask for is that guys just play hard for them, like you just said. Yeah, these guys did, uh, you know, just think about the six seniors we had. They six or five seniors they had they they played really hard for us. They bought in from the beginning, and uh, obviously, if you're not familiar with myself or or Coach Dunn at Marist, he's a defensive oriented coach, and he demands a lot and on the defensive end. And those guys bought in, and I I commend those guys for that. And I truly just to watch them smile and the satisfaction of them winning two three games in a row. It, it was an immeasurable moment as a coach. And that's what makes 
me want to stay in the profession when you see those guys, those seniors smile and, and be like, wow, we did, we did something, we accomplished something. And it doesn't always equate to winning and losing. It's just the satisfaction that they know that for the rest of their lives that I did something positive, you know. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, Coach. So, Coach, the next question that I have for you is uh, recently you were named one of the 50 most impactful, impactful mid-major coaches in the nation. Uh, just tell us what it's like earning an accomplishment like that. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Civil Ways Media for recognizing me for that uh, uh, award. And it means a lot, you know, but honestly, in all honesty, uh, he, as coaches and everyone knows, you don't need a, an award to be recognized for what you just do innately every day. Mm -hmm. And it's just caring about people. And yes, I love the recognition. It feels good and, and it's nice to know. But just know on a day in and day out, that's what all of these coaches on the mid, on the Division One, whatever level you coach in, in college basketball, do. And I'm, I'm like I said, I'm appreciative of that. And you know the staff that that I work on, Coach Dunn, providing me the platform to be myself. Yeah. Um. That's that's first and foremost, and under his tutelage. But um, like I said, I'm appreciative of that recognition, and we're still working. And every day we all have to be better. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Coach, like you said in your introduction uh, before your time at Marist, uh, you were on the St. Peter's staff. And during the 2016-2017 season, you guys won the CIT championship. Uh, tell us about uh, your time at St. Peter's and the experience of winning the CIT championship. <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of the most memorable moments in my life, simply because when I got to St. Peter's, we, uh, we we recruited some freshmen. Uh, they were pretty much green to everything, uh, not knowing the system, having playing from high school and having to transition. And just watching the transition from growing each year and getting better and better in each year. And I commend my head coach for that in, in an immense way because, you know, a lot of people would look at Coach Dunn and, and might – look at his win loss record and say certain things but as a man as a man of value and as a person of who he as a great person who he is at day in day out in character you take guys and you watch them grow then you see your fruits of your labor yep. that's case in point of watching how to build a program because mm -hmm. today we're in a society where it's instant gratification I got have to win now have to win now but to go back to your question Coach Dunn was able to build a program with freshmen, watch them become sophomores, watch them become juniors, and then see their fruits of their labor, of his labor, by the time they're seniors. And ultimately, we won a championship. But that year, our league was, it was really tough. You had the year, that was the year Monmouth was really off the charts. Um, Iona was very good. You had probably about five teams in the MAC that was over 500, five to six teams that were over. 500 overall and that year we finished second in the league but to go back to what you were saying winning that championship it was all a reflection of them when they were young puppies mm -hmm. and I hate to compare it more like a a, a Lion King moment <laughs> but it, it really was because you see you're watching them grow each year and you're watching them progress each year it shows you that you know obviously the great leader we have was, is watching them grow, watching them grow. And to watch these kids grow and then to win a championship at that stage on the road, winning 11 of your last 12 games, I think that's immeasurable. And that was probably one of my proudest moments because there was not a point in time in that game I was worried about losing. Yeah. I honestly felt that way. I was not. And to this day, I can say that we won a, some type of national championship. You know, and to see those guys smile made my day, made my journey. Absolutely. Yeah, just going back on how tough the MAC conference was in that season, uh, and you pointed at Mammoth, a uh, guy that I played in high school with, actually was on that Mammoth team, Justin Robinson. He a uh, good friend of mine. He went to him. He's overseas now, and uh, that Mammoth team was special. But that whole conference, those years, was 
just at the top tier for them for the Mac that I would say in the past 10 years, I would say that was the top tier for the Mac. And like you said, to accomplish that CIT championship and 11 of your last 12 in the Mac, that's very impressive. Yeah, it, he was really impressive as a player. Um, yeah. Enjoyed watching him. And, and, why, and he's also another gentleman that yep. took that leap each year. He improved each year. So I commend that staff as well, uh, Mama's staff as well, for watching their fruits of their, their labor grow. And, and Justin Robinson. Absolutely. All right, Coach, so uh, the next question that I have for you is, I was doing a little research on you before we uh, shot the podcast today, and I saw that uh, you have worked at the Nike pre-draft camp. Uh, just tell us about the experience there and what you learned from coaching that camp. Uh, you know what? It, it was one of those times where I wasn't coaching in college. Mm -hmm. It's one of those times where I had to work my way into – you know, carving a niche. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you know my background, I've worked many camps just to create a network, just to build organic relationships with people. Um, and having that experience to work those camps, that camp in particular was, uh, uh, you know, very in insightful. Um, the, the talent level was off the charts. Um, being and, and then being around uh, people, knowledgeable people in the, in the profession and formulating those relationships was probably the biggest key for me. And it was more or less, I mean, basketball comes, it comes second nature to me as far as basketball as it relates to, but just people, just being able to connect was probably one of the biggest things and watching the talent as they grow and as, as they go through their stages. So that was probably one of uh, those uh, impactful moments for me, just being at that camp. Yeah, absolutely. Like you just said about, connecting with people there and I'm touching back on other coaches that I've talked with it's all like in this basketball business whether it's coaching AAU or D1 D2 or D3 it's all about make who you make connections with that's yeah. what everyone has told me yeah it, it has to be because it's a people business yep. and you just have to be able to talk and articulate your thoughts and tell people what they want, um, what, what, what you want, but it has to organically happen because everyone's doing the same thing. And I haven't been one to just splurt out, splurt out. I actually generally care about people and I would hope that reciprocates um, on, on, on their end as it relates to me. So, you know, it's just keep building, building, you know. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So coach, the next question that I have for you guys is this past season at Marist, your, your guys' record might not show for it, but you guys won a lot of close games and you lost a lot of close games, whether it was in regulation or in overtime. Uh, tell us what you and your staff are trying to do to uh, improve your guys' record and overall your players for next season. Um, what, we, what we're trying to do is we're, we're heavily on statistics. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Dunn has made that a point of emphasis this last couple of years, the statistics aspect of it. And, you know, as we watch games and film and we're, we surface through things in the off season now, and everyone's in a, the same type of bind as far as not being able to uh, work out guys, et cetera. If you're fortunate enough, obviously you have a hoop in your backyard and weights, et cetera. Not everyone has that opportunity to have those things readily available to them. So the point of emphasis that we've kind of hit home on was uh, um, to met, like right now you can't play basketball in the physical, Yeah. but you can play basketball in the mental right now. Absolutely. And that's, and that's the one thing we've hit home. Um, a lot of film session for these guys, uh, once their finals is complete this, this week, we have a plan. Coach Dunn constructed a nice plan so we can attack with these guys to mentally sharpen their um, IQs and what their uh, deficiencies were last year and how we can change some of the outcomes that's happened last year. I, I believe we lost probably about nine or 10 games by a possession, whether it was overtime or, or, or in regulation. You win eight of those games that changes your fortune for the year. And, and kids are fragile. Students, student athletes are very fragile when it comes to that. They, you see seven and 23 could have easily been uh, 15 and, and 12, you know, just, just throwing those numbers out there. It's just one or two possessions. And what we're trying to do 
And what Coach Dunn is trying to instill in us as a staff is let's get them better at the little stuff right now, which is watching it, seeing their mistakes, seeing how we can help them fine tune that, and then collectively put these guys together to where we have a formula to win within the next year or two. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Coach, uh, that leads me right into my next question uh, about your guys' rebuild for next season. Uh, tell us about your incoming class, freshman class and transfer class. We signed uh, four guys. Um, we had a guy sit out last year. So, And then prior to th that, we bought in four freshmen. So they'll be sophomores and uh, a couple junior college guys who will be seniors. So we're still building that program. That, that, uh, that very first year was more or less the seniors that were there. We would classify this, this past year as technically – our first year, but on paper, it's our second. Yeah. Um, and then obviously coming into this third year, we've bought in, uh, we've addressed a lot of things. Uh, we bought in some guards that can, uh, that can play. We, we got, we have some uh, big guys that are sitting out. We have a big guy that's sitting out who can play as well. And, but the biggest thing with the class, and we've addressed all our needs, but the biggest thing is the freshmen become sophomores. Yep. And the juniors become seniors. That's the biggest recruiting um, thing we've adjusted to because you can't buy experience and you can't buy time. And these guys stepping into their roles under, with the understanding that, wow, last year was hard. Let me get better. So that's our biggest uh, uh, recruit coming into this year. And then obviously we have the freshmen and the transfers that are coming in who have to fill in, who, who are good in particular areas that our guys were not, but the class consists of the returners coming back and expectations in them are really high, and that's what we're leaning on still. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Coach, the final question that I have for you today is uh, what are you most looking forward to about next season with your guys and your staff at Mayors? Uh, the first thing, this, this, I'm looking forward to being back with the staff again because we have a bunch of good, a good group of uh, guys. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with our staff at all, but uh, we have a, a good group of guys in uh, Driscoll, Batia and uh, and Long and obviously the head of, the head of it all, Coach Don. So we have a pretty good staff. Um, but as far as like the guys, just being around the guys and looking forward to the guys understanding that okay, we had a rough year. Now what are we going to do about it? Yeah. And that's the biggest key coming into this year is last year happened. Now what are we going to do about it this year? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking so looking forward to that. And then with the implementation of the new guys, then. Um, we hopefully we have a key to success there. Absolutely. Well, coach, that's all the questions that I have for you today. Uh, can't thank you enough for joining me on the show. Uh, looking forward to watching you guys at Marist next year. It's right in my backyard, about 20 minutes from my house. So I got to I got to come out and uh, check some games out. Uh, wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. And I love meeting new people in this business. Love talking hoops with guys, and glad to make a new friend in this business. No, I appreciate it. Hopefully you're not on the other side yeah. when we come to Buffalo, man. I'll be really disappointed if you're sitting uh, on the other side, man. I'll be right behind <laughs> you guys, I promise. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it, Alex, man. Thank no, you for having me. Yeah, no doubt, man. Stay safe. I'll be in touch soon. For sure. All right, man. All right.